Hey everybody, AmpReparGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So, I'm feeling a lot better, I just have a tiny bit of rasp left in my voice. I keep talking to customers, so <laughs> it doesn't really, uh, it's not helping the cause. So, <clears throat> so I said I would make a video uh, about roller inductors versus band switches, you know, rotary switches. So, I'm going to make one. It'll be a nice short video. I know a lot of people prefer short videos, and every once in a while, there's a guy who say, make a long video, but, you know, then people just skip through it anyway. So, anyway, I have a roller inductor here. It's an, uh, an edge-wound type. Contact rides on the outside of the wheel. This is made by Yip Johnson, I believe. There's another company that was making them also, um, same design. So, anyway, I have some like insulation attached to it. I have some of these I'll be getting rid of it, or I might use them for an antenna tuner or something, I don't know. But, so here we have a Kenwood TL922 rotary switch. It's a progressively shorting type, two sets of contacts here, two switches. One adds padding capacitance on one side of the output network. And the other one progressively shorts the coil, the uh, pi coil. It's a pi setup. And also adds padding capacitance to the other capacitor for the output network. So this is the plate side, load side. Okay, so here are the problems with the roller inductor. You know, this is an easier way to set up an output network, but this is really not the way to go. So what happens is, the contacts over time get dirty, whether it's an edge wound or a roller wheel setup. Uh, you know, this is a better type, in my opinion, uh, less likely to have an issue. So, you know, if you don't keep the contacts clean, you can end up with an open. And that's really bad, because if you end up with an open, you're using the entire inductor, and then the tuning of the output network is way off you end up with more voltage across the anode, the R voltage skyrockets, you can end up with uh, you know if you're transmitting you can end up flashing the tube or you know and you know you can end up with an arc all the way from the inductor to the chassis and people if I've heard people with you know two plus inch arc depending on the power level of the amplifier and that's really bad okay so you know, another problem is, an inductor like this, you know, it's not progressively shorting, you know, like a rotary switch. A rotary switch would, you know, let's say you're on 160. This isn't enough to cover 160. Let's say you had a longer coil, and the longer coils have more problems with when it comes to what I'm about to describe. Oops, sorry, someone said I should use a pointer, so actually multiple people, so I'll do that. So, um, you know, if you had a longer coil, and or even this, you know, you as you go closer to the okay let's say the capacitor is attached to this side and then the other capacitor is attached to this side and you're making the coil shorter as you're going up in frequency now you have all of that unused coil which could end up resonating and then you can't tune the output network throws the cue off and it just you know turns into a mess so, you know, I don't, I'm not going to use roller inductors. I've never used them in the past, you know, at least for an amplifier output network. Another problem is <clears throat> you're supposed to, you're not supposed to tune a roller inductor under load, high load. You know, you're supposed to um, key the amp, see where it's at, you know, and then adjust plate load and then unkey it, adjust the inductor and you know go back and forth back and forth you know because you put a lot of stress on the contacts when it's grossly out of tune it's just you know bad idea you know I see a lot of these and then you know an inductor is rated for a certain amount of current okay so I think this one's 15 amps it's either 10 or 15 I think it's it might be 10 I'd have to look it up but um you know, as you go up in frequency, you have skin effects, you have less surface area, you know, for the actual inductor material, and, you know, current rating goes down, 
you know can't rate you know can't handle as much current and you know you have problems so uh, I've seen people using a 20 amp edge wound inductor and large amplifiers you know because the 30 amp gets for, it gets huge you know and then you don't have enough turns and the Q ratio is all messed up the turns are huge um, and uh, you know it's just not a good idea. You, know, you have the 20 amp inductor, and then they they use it on the lower bands, and you run into all those other you know those other issues I I talked about, especially if there's more inductance, and uh, you know with the skin effect, you end up melting it down on the higher frequencies. It ends up being like a glorified SSB amplifier. You just can't get away with high duty cycles, uh, AM or FT8 or whatever. So. Other people will, you know, some people like they did in some of the Henry amplifiers, like Henry AK Ultra, they'll have a relay that will short out the unport, you know, unused portion of the coil or some of it, and they get around, you know, it's kind of like they're trying to progressively short it, but, you know, uh, with just one relay. So, you know, if you use multiple coils or, you know, uh, like Maritron L1500s and other amps, they'll use. You know, as you can see, for the higher bands, you need more surface area, larger coil, and then you go down a frequency, you don't need as large of a coil, and then, you know, like the 160 coil right there, you need even less surface area, because, you know, you know, the skin effect isn't as, you know, it's not as high, so, you know, it's, it's not as pronounced as on the outer diameter, it's more uh, concentrated in the, into the uh, center, you know, so, sorry, so. I think that uh, covers about everything. So, sorry, uh, and all over there. But so that's why I use a progressively shorting rotary switch instead of roller inductors. Easy way, harder way. And some people can say, "Oh, well, you know, you just set the cue, the perfect cue, whatever." It's kind of an excuse. There's no reason you really need to do that. You know, if you want some continuous tune amplifier, but roller inductors are really meant for set and forget, not up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, you know. Uh, there were old broadcast transmitters, I forgot the two companies, but, you know, their, their marketing was, you know, they point out the downfalls of the inductors, ver variable inductors versus uh, uh, rotary switches and guess who won the the ones with the rotary switches because the variable inductors are just it's all sorts of issues all those things i talked about and it's just you know just not as good as rotary switches so that's why i'm using this rotary switch and guess how much this switch costs this switch configured for multi-tech is about six five six hundred bucks a 20 amp variable inductor, I believe uh, Kintronic Labs is selling them for around 1200 or so. And a 20 amp, you know, this isn't a 20 amp, but a 20 amp inductor would not be large enough for a 36, 6000. So, and then you'd have to go to a 30 amp, and a 30 amp inductor would not fit in this cabinet. It would be like from here to maybe here and tall, and you'd still have to get the coil away from the chassis and you know, they end up with the super large turns. You know, it'll be really wide, tall, whatever. So, uh, so I hope that answers a lot of questions. And sorry if I didn't put things uh, perfectly, but I'm sure uh, you get the gist of what I'm trying to talk about. And uh, I have a whole bunch of amps here. 922 parts came except for the capacitor board. I... I've said before, I don't, I, I, out of like the, almost a thousand of those amps I've worked on, I've only used to change the caps twice, but someone tried to change the caps, they didn't do it right, I'll show that when I get to it, but Harbach was closed for the holidays, and he says he's shipping things this weekend, uh, I have an AL811H here, and uh, more amps over there, so um, next week I will be rocking and rolling, I'll get those out of the boxes, and I'm going to clean my bench off again. I know a lot of people have a pet pee over that, but this is a busy shop. This isn't a fly-by-night operation. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, I take care in every amp, so I, every amp I work on, very thorough, and 
my personal amps, I don't care. You know, it's like, but, you know, I treat customers' amplifiers better than my own amps, and I don't leave any stone unturned. Uh, very, very, like I said, very, very busy here, repair shop. I believe I work on more amplifiers than uh, anybody else. Um, and I get things fa done faster than anybody else. There's really no excuse. I think a lot of people out there do this as a side thing, and, you know, they, they work on things here and there or whatever and I uh, want to make a few extra bucks but you know, I charge about the same and I actually do more work than uh, what they charge and that's my boiler turning on and um, I take a lot of pride in what I do so um, very humble here just love working on amplifiers and this is what I do every day and uh, you know so I plan on doing it I'm 42 I plan on doing this until I can't see or solder or and I figure if I get to the point where I can't pick things up, I can always figure out a way to get things in and on my bench. You know? so, so anyway, thanks for watching. Website is amprepairguy.com. It's 203-892-4119. If you have an inductor, contact on the end and ends. And uh, some have one set. This one has two, so you can configure it you know one way or the other way and you have contacts here and here you know so you know gotta keep them clean so that's a pain in the butt so again thanks for watching 73 take care